All right, let's help you out today. We have a Kinesis, level 241. We don't see those very much. Mm -hmm. How are you uh, How are you feeling? How are you doing in the game? And what can I do for you today? Okay, so I guess I'll just introduce myself real quick. Yep. Um, I started playing before Pirate class was even a thing mm -hmm. as a kid. Yep. And then, a um, <laughs> I, yeah, just a little bit ago. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was on and off on uh, regular servers. And then I quit uh, about like two years ago, like a couple years ago. And then I came back last year, August, and started on Reboot. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I remember. When I was playing regular server, I loved Kinesis a lot, and so I wanted to do it in Reboot as well. And your videos, Copper Son videos, and like um, the Boki videos are what pretty much brought me back into the game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. So um, we're to blame is what you're saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you you restarted my addiction. You know, that's what it is. You ruined me. Okay. Well, here I, here I am perpetuating <laughs> it even further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then yeah, so uh, I have two. I have short-term goals, and I also have long-term goals. So, mm -hmm. uh, short-term goals is to pretty much clear easy, lucid, normal slime, mm -hmm. and then long-term goals is to defeat the black mage. And then depending on how I defeat the black mage and everything at that time, I'll maybe go to Saren and above. But I'm not mm -hmm. 100 sure yet. No, yep. and the. Um... Am I to assume from the from those goals that you have cleared like everything below those bosses? Yes. So I've already cleared. I, well, I haven't cleared like hard Damien and like. Yeah, those would uh, be considered higher. Too. Those would be considered harder. Yeah. Even yeah. for even for party, because <laughs> yeah. the the HP but, on those is quite extensive. Yeah, but everything else I've cleared by myself. So. Okay. And do you have the goal to do those by yourself as well, just to keep soloing? Have you have you tried them in party already, or? Uh, I haven't tried anything in party yet, but mm -hmm. I am trying to look for a party at some point. Uh, I know that Kinesis isn't really like a heavy, heavily played character, and now a lot of people might not be looking for them. So mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it might be a bit tricky. It might be one of those things where people are just looking for your BA or just looking for your stat, and then be like okay uh to round out the party I guess, yeah kinesis is generally not seen as like the powerhouses that uh party compositions are built around right mm -hmm. which is you know probably rightfully so but it's not like it's a complete dud of course it can do a lot of stuff but it is definitely i think one of the harder to play classes that has not not quite a fair ratio of like how much it gets back for how much energy you need to put in and you know how many i think i think it got a little bit easier now in destiny with the debuffs right maintaining all of those uh, yeah it's a little bit easier and, and uh, uh our psychic final power damage is... regeneration yeah and more final damage yeah yeah but even with that i i still definitely think it's not as strong as certain classes as like adele and <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's like average at best, but it's probably a little bit below average. Although I must say that I think the weakest and the strongest classes definitely got closer together. So the fact that it's, you know, not above average doesn't mean that it's like doing a third of like an Adele's damage or something. It's probably, it, it's, I mean, it's considerably lower, but it's not like half or a third or something, as, as long as you play the character well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, I, I mean, Kinesis basically does very well against stationary bosses. So for like a Lucid Part 1 or something, you can do very well because you can commit all of your damage and confirm it all, right? Uh, yes, but then for yes. phase two, it can be a bit harder if, you know, at least it's just flying all over the place. And that's a little yeah, annoying. Phase, yeah, phase two is very tricky. Uh, and we do have a self-bind, but, like, it's not that long, so... Yeah. Regular old, know. yeah, non kana bind duration. Yeah. <laughs> at least you've got a boss debuff, right? So you can get some IED on the... <laughs> for the yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so so your short-term goals for slime and lucid deaths completely like blind at this point. You haven't gone into those boss fights at all yet. Um, I've gone into easy lucid, mm -hmm. and I beat her first 
phase in like 10 minutes and then second phase i kind of just time out but yep. the best i've gotten is like last two bars and then i'll time out and that's that okay that's pretty good then yeah all right yeah, and so then, not too far off yeah and then slime uh is a little i'm learning that boss still it's a little tricky but i know that once i get it it's gonna be a breeze pretty much okay um radio then um uh and and did you have any like a, another specific list of questions or just like in general we can just go over all the systems and then kind of see you know what are you maybe missing what is something that we can prioritize to to work on for the short term and the long term and then just set like a general path or i don't know if you had like a whole list of questions that you might have for me yeah i do have a couple of questions mm -hmm. um i i guess like for for me the uh, biggest question that i have right now is uh nodes and like how i should make drop rate for nodes specifically mm -hmm. and then um that familiars is also another one yeah okay and uh i guess like maybe a little bit on gear per se but yeah. that can be touched just yeah, like we'll definitely get bit. we'll definitely get to that. Um, so the way I usually do it, if you've seen other sessions, is I usually try to go through all of the systems just one by one, make sure that all of the understanding there is like on point where you feel comfortable with it. Um, or if it's completely off, then I just send you the YouTube video to watch, and then you do that if you're like running out of time. But otherwise, I basically run you down the cliff notes of the video, right? Um, yeah. And then once all of that falls into place, then we'll go to equips, and then a lot of the decisions and a lot of the movement through the equips will hopefully make way more sense because of all the systems you know understanding being augmented as well so that's uh okay, yeah that's usually how we do how we go about it so um yeah you can do flames and familiars those are the things you feel like you you miss the most on oh yeah yeah flames for sure i i definitely miss the mark i feel like i missed the mark because i'm not I, I'll, I'll be honest i don't fully know what i'm doing when it comes to flaming mm -hmm. uh and I'm not a hundred percent sure on what I should be looking for. Or well, what how are you to doing now? A flame. Tell me what. Tell me what you're doing now. Um, honestly, I'm just, I'm just kind of like putting flames on on gear and just seeing and just thinking like, oh, maybe this is a decent flame or not. So, uh, what are you using to determine maybe it's decent? Like, I don't know. I'm just like, is it all step and? just basic stat as well so like int or whatever mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty much all i'm doing i don't really yeah. look at anything else and just if you see those two then you're like okay or like a lot of all set or a lot of int or a combination then you hold and then otherwise you just move on to the next item mm -hmm. well you can't really go wrong with that that's a that's a that's a good place to start honestly um but yeah we I can fill you in on the on the background so the the way that damage in this game works always is that a lot of it depends on everything else you have right so if you had for example if there was some kind of way that you would get i don't know let's say that there was a passive skill oh actually a really good example was the the old reboot passive right did you ever play around during that time uh yeah i played a little bit so but i don't really know that specific passive yeah so the, that passive used to give one percent damage for every two levels so what would happen is the pile of damage, the further you got into the game, got huge. And when you're bossing, your damage percent and your boss damage percent get added up together. And that becomes one of your your final damage multipliers, basically. But what happened is because that is additive and thrown together, you get diminishing res uh, returns as you get higher numbers, right? Does that all make sense? I don't know what your level of maths is <laughs> for everything. Does that make sense? E kinda. Kinda, yeah. So let's say... Um, um, how can you do the chat? What's the easy way to explain the difference between like multiplicative and additive stuff? Um, well, it, I mean, maybe it's easier to explain with stat and all stat, I guess. But like, let's say that you have, let's say that the game has like no sources of percentage stat, right? And okay. only sources of flat stat. Then if there was something that existed in the game, um, when you already have a, a lot of stat, 
and then you add a 1% stat somewhere, comparatively, that 1% will mean way more than just a little bit of stat, right? Like, let's say that you have 10,000 stat, and you can get 5% stat, then that would be uh, a big number, but that would be like 500, right? Versus if you just add 50 more stat, you're only adding 50 stat of um, uh, of the 10,000. That's a way smaller percentage, right? Mm -hmm. But if you already have 5% and you add another 5%, you're still adding 5% of your stat, but you're not adding 5% um, of your total stat anymore. It's a little bit less, right? Because you already added a 5% before. So you're not adding 5% of the total, but 5% of the amount before the first 5% was applied. So the more you stack those additive percentages in one clump together, the more you get diminishing returns, the higher you go. Does that make sense? Yes, actually. Yeah, because you have, if you have zero all stat and you add 10%, you just become 10% total damage stronger. But if you already have 100% and you add 10%, then that's, you only get like, um, that's only gonna be 9% uh, stronger, right? So mm -hmm. th that's what the diminishing returns um, is. So what that illustrates is that it's all a delicate balance. And the one thing that doesn't play by those rules is final damage, because it just always looks at the total clump of whatever you're putting out, and then it multiplies the total. So that's the one we always want, because there's no diminishing returns on that. In fact, it actually makes every single other upgrade you make more efficient, because it just makes those whatever percentage stronger that the percentage of final damage is. But that also means that if a skill, let's say, doesn't give final damage and then adds 10% final damage, you just take your entire damage, do it times 1.1 and you're done, right? But if right. a skill already gives you 10% final damage and goes to 15% final damage, it's not the same as just adding 5% final damage over everything. First, you would have to take the 10% final damage away, right? So you go to like 90% of what you're doing and then add 15% of that. So it'll still be higher, but it won't be quite 5% higher. It'll be a little bit less. That's the big difference between additive and multiplicative. That's all clear? Clear. So what that means is that everything in the game is constantly balancing, right? And so it's like, how many sources of percentage do you have? How many source, sources of a flat amount do you have? How high can that flat amount go? How high can that percentage go? So as you can think, like on a very low level item where the flames in general have lower quality and lower outcome, a percentage all set there is typically very, very good. Not only because it's really strong compared to how much stat you could be getting from the flame, but also because typically your potentials are lower grade, right? They were only rare and epic. So your total amount of all stat or intellect percentage specifically is very low. So comparatively, a flame with all set will be very, very valuable early on. But the higher you go, the better your potentials get, the more um, percentage you will have, and you will get some diminishing returns on all set. It's still really good, of course, but it'll go down a bit. But then if you go even further, and the potentials are kind of done, your star force will start building up. And what a star force give you again, a lot of flat stat again, and that gets multiplied by the all stats. So then the all stat gets better again. So it's a constant like ebb and flow of all of the sources of damage in the account that kind of determine how valuable, valuable it is. So what we kind of figured out on like, that's a lot, right, to try to, and we don't want you to every 10 levels have to throw everything into like a giant calculator and just have like numbers rolling out. So what we kind of figured out is asking people in different stages of the game with different levels of funding to be like, for you specifically, for you, <laughs> um, one all stat, one weapon attack, one stat, one secondary stat, you know, the main things that give you any kind of damage. How do those compare to each other? And have that be the guiding line of how stats um, relate to each other roughly. Because what that lets you see is, let's say that, you know, right now, one stat is a little bit better, but it's pretty close. But maybe 30 levels from now, if you keep growing the same way that you're growing, maybe the way that the stats change might make it so that another um, combination of stats on your flame might actually end up being better. And you're not really sacrificing much for it, but you're saving a whole lot of money because you don't have to reroll, right? So the flames try to kind of future proof how good the damage of all of the elements of the flame that give you any kind of damage is and then you basically throw it into like a pretty simple calculator and it'll tell you if that flame is future proof or not so very early on if you just get all stat you can sit on it you know especially if you have like 12 star gear and epic gear like on mules and stuff if you get five or six percent all stat that's probably insanely good and you don't even have to worry about the other stuff but as soon as you start working on higher level potential higher star force then like like you have you want that combination of stat and all stat most likely 
because um, the, what we found is that all stat is usually worth around very early in the game it can be worth like 15 stat or something right because you have so little stat going around and weapon attack comparatively will also be more valuable because later on uh, well, compared to later, because later on, when the Star Force goes up, you get a lot of weapon attack, right? You already start noticing it once you get to 17. But if you yeah. get to, like, 21 and 22 stars on CRA, you'll get stuff like, um, I don't know if I'm, oh, I'm a marksman. Yeah, so my, I have 21 CRA here, so that's 71 weapon attack on it. So that's basically every single piece that you own becomes like a mini weapon. <laughs> and then your total amount of weapon attack goes up so much that one individual weapon attack on a flame isn't as big anymore because of again because of the diminishing returns you're just throwing it throwing it onto a, a bigger pile so for future um for um to be future proof typically you want all stat but a lot of uh, flat stat is always good because you're gonna have a lot of uh, percentage stats to multiply it with and so we're, we're comparing two things is like how good is it going to be versus how expensive is it to get that amount right because right. it you know bigger number better all that stuff but if you're then spending like 20 bill on getting a good flame with like four more stat but you could have also spent that on getting 21 stars instead then you're yeah burning your money basically right so mm -hmm. uh so what i have under flames is um i think three resources so one is the video uh where i basically explain all of this uh, and i also explain the other two which i'll get to uh right now which is basically um well, you have a bunch of resources there. You can look at all the possible outcomes. There's a few uh, tables and a few spreadsheets with, with numbers. But the main thing is um, this. Have you seen the progression grid before? Yes, I have. So you see for flames, there's um, four, uh, no, three, three, um, three rows, right? So one is for the mm -hmm. weapon because the weapon is, um, is mainly, because, again, because of the value um that the so the flame score comes in right that's the one that determines what is the the weight of all of the sources of damage how do we add them all up together and then the number that comes out is basically what is the equivalent of just all stat it, it tries to redirect all stat as as one point so how much intellect quote unquote is this worth and then you'll hear people talk about flame score and so depending on the stage of the game that you're in you'll be able to um and I go, I go over this in a video as well. I have like a mathematical example, but let's say we can we can take one of your items, for example, right? So we can take the uh, Royal Dunwich hat that you have here. It's got 44 mm -hmm. strength. That doesn't give you anything, but you can already do like, um, so let's say that we are gonna flame it for late game, right? Because we're not gonna transpose or anything. So we just wanna see how good it is now. Uh, and we can always switch later, of course. So you'll see strength dex. There's no room for that, right? Because it doesn't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. Not one of the factors. We can put intellect to 20, and then we put the all stats to 5. And you'll see here it's a 62.5 flame score. If you want, you can save it down here, and you can do like CRA hat, you know, and save it like that. And then, uh, oh, it wrote over it somehow. 25, save. There we go. And then th this might make it easier to compare as well. After a while, you know, you'll have an easier time. Uh, kind of just seeing an item and being like, eh, fuck this, I need to be better. <laughs> or, oh yeah, this is pretty good. And then if you check um, if you check the same item and you would t tip end game as well, it'll go up a little bit because the value of all stat scales better into the end game. So, you know, this can you can then compare to the progression grid and be like, okay, what stage of your game you in? You're at 241, right? So we should want you to be moving towards the beginning of the late, ga uh, late game here. So if you scroll down, you'll have to know if the item has flame advantage or not, which uh, CRA does, I'll tell you. But um, if you check the video out, it'll also tell you on where you can check if something has flame advantage and what are the indicators so you can know basically when you see an item, you can be able to immediately tell if it's, it does, has flame advantage or not. One of the big tells is that flame advantage items always have um, four lines that are affected. So a line uh, can be, oh, I just pause the music. Um, so a line, uh, for example, um, can be, uh, sorry, I fucked up the mu music and now I messed up the time because I was fucking around with the volume. There we go. Um, one big indicator, for example, is the four lines. So one line can be required level. Uh, all stat is also one line. And then intellect can be a line. Strength can be a line. But what can also be a line is strength and intellect or intellect and luck. 
So then you'll see those mm -hmm. compound numbers that you've sometimes seen, like probably in item megaphones, where people have these huge numbers of stat. And that's because they have these compound numbers going on. And um, I don't know if you have any, just scrolling through your stuff. Abzo tends to, yeah, so like the glove, for example, right, with the 84 int, that's not a single line, that's two lines. So what the lines on okay. the Abzo Lab gloves most likely are is tier six of attack, tier whatever the hell that is, tier four, the tier, yeah, tier four of MP probably, I think. And then tier, um, that's I think 54 intellect, so maybe tier six intellect, and then tier five intellect and luck, something like that. Mm -hmm. It's you know, you know it's a rough estimation. I would you know you'd have to look at the calculations, but that's that's a little bit convoluted, right? To be like, oh, it's tier six this, tier five that. That's really weird. So what we kind of just go by is you know, what is the total potential of an item? How expensive is that going to be? And then how well does it scale? Throw that together and then just give you like a number, like this is a good flame score to aim for. And then, you know, if you can tell by a site what flame score anything is, then that's fine. If you can't, then you just check back here, use the calculator, turn in the number, you see, oh, the hat is like 62 and a half, 65, like around there. You can look at the milestones, beginning of late game, the item has flame advantage. Uh, so you just check this row. And then you check the low level here, and it says here you roughly want to be around 85. So that means you're on the lower end by 20. So that's something that you can keep in mind. And then if you do that for all your items, you can easily see like, okay, this item has way more room for growth, right? And you also see the items without flame advantage <laughs> have very low bars. So just because items without flame advantage have like 12 flame score, you might think, oh, they have way more room for growth than a top that has 65. It's actually not true, right? It'll be way more mm -hmm. expensive to get the same amount of growth on a non-flame advantage than on a flame advantage item. So if you're looking for priorities of what to flame because you're doing bosses, for example, and you're just getting flames, the priority typically is always to make sure that you get a good weapon flame. And again, you can check this as well with the flame score, right? Because if you have um, magic attack here and, and nothing else, for example, then you know it's times three for endgame, which doesn't seem very impressive. But the thing is, your um, weapon flames are based on the percentage um, of your base attack of your weapon. And also, that scales also with the level of your of your weapon. So, you've probably seen, like, the Fafnir flames for magic attack are pretty depressing. Um, yeah. <laughs> but then you get to Abzo, so you get a higher percentage, and on the higher end, and you'll see way bigger numbers. And then, you know, when you see Smegaphones of Arcane Gear and of Genesis Gear, right, you'll see insane numbers on those. And that's mm -hmm. because the flames, I and mean, particularly the green part, like scales very well. So if you wanted to check your weapon flame, for example, you'd have to look at the base and the item level and whether it has advantage, but you, you don't want to be flaming non-flame advantage weapons ever. Um, so this one was, how much was it? 201, 201. And then you should be able to see the number that you have, the 65, you should be able to see it uh, right up here. So you see that's a tier six, which that's the highest that you can get with a powerful flame and only Eternal Flames can get seven, and they only have 1% chance of even getting it a tier seven. So 65 is just very solid. And if you check back in the grid, you'll also see that here is what you want to have is a tier five plus. So a plus means like extra damage, boss damage, all stat, you know, some of those big damage dealers uh, or a tier six. So what you have is a tier six with four all stat and a little bit of intellect. So I would consider that that's basically a tier six plus. So you're, you're basically already like a little bit ahead uh, when it comes to the quality of the flame. Oh. But that also means if you switch over to an Absolab that you want to maintain the same quality, which probably means that you're going to have to get, go for a bigger number, right? Because I don't know the right. Abzo, uh, the Abzo <laughs> keeper off the top of my head, but if you go 160 and then the base is like, I don't know, like 240 or something, then you know the, the same quality flame is now 96 instead of 65. So that's like 30 oh, wow. extra attack, yeah. So you're gonna get more from the star forcing, more from the base, more from the flaming, and then you have, suddenly you have 100 magic attack more. And that's why it makes sense, especially for the weapon, to tier up and to, 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 to upgrade to the next tier weapon, basically. Okay, Th that's really good, because uh, I remember flaming my faf weapon and i i was like oh i only got 65 uh, magic attack that's it mm -hmm. and yeah like it's hard I, to I, say I, like is this good or is this bad right it's always very tricky because they're all over the place and then maybe you take another weapon for another class and then they get 30 and you're like oh well this guy has to be bad because i remember the kinesis got 60 but maybe for 30 that's their equivalent of your 65 like if, if it's um a, a claw on a night lord for example they have horrible base stats so their tier six 
I think might be like 35 or something on their on their Fafnir, which is just you know depressing. But that's the best they could do there. But that yeah. also means that comparatively, the weapon attack might be not as important of getting a high tier on, and it might be more important to get like a high tier of boss damage, for example, because boss damage gets 2% per tier. So if it goes up to 6, then you can see a 12%. Um, but the one last connection I wanted to make is that if you're ever wondering if like an up upgrade is like worth it over another one, there is always calculators that allow you to say, um, th or that tell you like this is how much it's roughly going to cost, right? There's a Star Force calculator, there's a Flames cost calculator, um, there's a, um, a potential calculator, right? For all of those, you can just be like, oh, I want this potential, how much is it going to cost me? You can even, you know, enter events and stuff for Star Force. But you can basically use the flame score calculator to see how roughly how will those upgrades compare to each other. Because it'll be very hard to tell just, you know, by looking at an item like, oh, this is worth, eight, this costs 18 bill and this costs six. Um, you know, which one do I do? What is more efficient, right? Because there's so many things you can do. So if you put the, uh, the the magic attack here that you have, right, the 65, and you put that into the flame score, then this part is just the flame score, basically, of the weapon, just of the attack part. But, I mean, you also have, what was it, 44 int and 4% offset, I think? Uh, oh, 40 and 4, yeah. So that yeah, basically means that your weapon is like equivalent flame score of 271. Whereas, you know, we compare to your hat, that's like two, four times that, right? So that's why the flame of your yeah. weapon is so much more important. And especially why the, the the weapon attack is the real thing that we mention here. Um, but that's why it's mentioned first, and that's why this is the thing you focus on. Okay. So yeah, if you go through the video, there's like links for how can you tell the difference, whether it's advantage, not advantage. Uh, and if you use the commands, you can find the calculators and everything. And then the third thing is the cost calculator. That's if you're really, you know, getting like down into, <laughs> I, w I wanna know if this is like worth going over. Uh, and how much okay. can I expect to be paying? And it'll tell you like the results in the powerful flames uh, and in um, eternal flames as well, I believe. Oh no, you can select here which ones you want to use, yeah. And it'll tell you roughly okay. how much it's going to cost and how many and etc. cetera. Okay, cool, yeah. Uh, cost calculators, I have used in the past, but mm -hmm. sometimes, I don't know if I'm just really lucky, but like, um it's possible. sometimes i just yeah i just i just get extremely lucky like um I, I did the cost calculator for just two line magic attack for the um what's it oh called? yeah you're secondary you're talking about probably yeah. I, I, you probably i mean given the stage of the game that you're in you definitely got lucky i mean there's no way you yeah. have spent the average amount for the secondary yeah yeah i honestly i did in like 30 cubes i was like oh yep. I, I was just trying to get two line. I wasn't even trying to aim for anything <laughs> nope. well, special. That's, so. that's just how it happens. I mean, yeah. and that's the thing, right? Because your flames, you could be like a one in a thousand flame, but if you use a hundred flames, there's a 10% chance you get one of those one in a thousand flames, right? So if you have mm -hmm. 10 people do that, then one of those 10 people is just going to get a very lucky flame. And same thing happens with potential. So the thing is, some of your items are going to be unlucky and <laughs> you're going to just throw money at it and you're going to get nowhere. And then some items are going to get lucky. And I mean, the secondary is probably the best item to get lucky on early because that is a very expensive item to get three line on. And that, mm -hmm. and because it's a line of magic attack, and it can definitely give you a good buffer because if a magic attack line is so much more efficient than a stat line. So if you get unlucky for rolling like two and a half stat or three stat on an accessory or, or like another piece, that's okay because that magic attack line is like taking care of three stat lines by itself or maybe even four. So that's a good buffer to have. Yeah. But yeah, you probably got lucky on that one. <laughs> uh, if yeah, I, I got guess. I, ridiculously lucky. So. Um, do flames feel more convincing and... Uh, feel more up to speed on that yeah i feel i feel yeah like that whole explanation like made a lot of sense mm -hmm. like comparing and knowing what you need and it's not always just going to be percent all stat it will sometimes be regular stat or sometimes it'll, it depends on the like the the tier of the item and if yep. it has play advantage or not yeah yeah, and some classes, and that's why the calculator has it as well, like, you know, you have a base int class, but, you know, your Shadowers and Dual Blade, Kadena, Kana, Xenon, they all scale a little bit differently. And for Demon Avengers, mm -hmm. it's just, you know, depressing overall. You just, you can all get <laughs> HP and weapon attack, and it's like, that's it, so. But, um, yeah, for 
for those you can just you know set to a different marker and then you're good the main thing you're going to be using the flame score on quite a bit is probably when you're flaming like if you get a pet marker or a dominator for transposing later and then mm. um so typically people aim somewhere between 105 and 115 you know the, the more serious you are and the more resources you have at your disposal the closer you want to the closer you want to be to 115 or above and that basically just comes down to i believe that's around like a 10 bill investment in the flame or something which early on is very uh, hefty but it you know once you've transposed you can't never re-roll that flame so you're prepping it for an end game flame and basically getting like the same quality that you would be expecting out of i don't know something better than a 160 piece honestly um even for, even for abzo you wouldn't really aim that high you know unless you're going for 21 or abzo or something yeah i don't i don't think i'm gonna go for 21 though mm -hmm. uh it's it's good to know for yourself that that's not realistic for now but if yeah. you keep playing eventually you'll get there yeah but you don't want to disappoint yourself in not getting there quickly enough you know <laughs> i i think for me though the main reason why i don't want to go 21 abso is because uh it takes me a long time to just farm like extra pieces and whatnot so yeah yeah, the main and way the, you would the, go about that is using fodder to transfer hammer over. So that the, yeah. the only risk would be basically from 20 to 21 one time on all the pieces. So the total amount mm -hmm. of backups you would need is probably going to be two or three, which is not too bad. Uh -huh. um, but the amount of backups you will need for the <laughs> fodder is significant and the amount of total money you would need is, is, is significant, of course. But the reason I'm mentioning it, mentioning it is because if you're going for arcane, um, I think it's kind of a waste to go for Arcane if you're not going to go at least 19 Arcane because 19 Arcane is kind of what you need to overpower 21 Abzo and mm -hmm. if you're just staying at 17 Arcane because you don't want to boom, which I understand, then you you would have been better off just spending that money towards the Abzos and getting 21 Abzo or 20 even or 21 Abzos and just be done faster and have more damage out of it. You know, wouldn't look as pretty <laughs> in, in full purple, but most people cover that shit with NX anyway, so, you know. <laughs> Yeah. From a, a functional standpoint, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um And if you're good on flames, we can go move over to familiars? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so what do you know so far about familiars? Um, I know they can increase, like, stat, drop rate, and not, not just, like, regular drop rate, item drop rate, and as well, they can also heal. Uh, and I know healing familiars is for like, uh, I want to say will, um, mm -hmm. but I feel like they take, or for me anyways, they f uh, they feel like they take a very long time to do, and uh, I know mm -hmm. that I can start getting, like the familiars at um, Asphera, yep, for the spiders, yep, and yeah, that's about that's about it. I just feel like. I, like for me personally, I feel like my familiars are not where they should be right now. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Are, are they in the document? Let me scroll. Up. Yeah, they they should be oh, at yeah. the bottom. -ish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Large amount of mezzo drop with seven crit, fifteen IED. That's nice. Um, ah, small heal and a unique. That's always great. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um. Yeah, so in the beginning, it's probably best if you're just working on your legion and stuff to just throw all of your rares and commons because they're going to be different types, right? To throw all of those onto characters where you need something, which is basically anything that's going to be bossing that could use 15% IED. That's by far the best line for rare, um, well, for common cards. It's basically the only valuable one. And then for rare, mm -hmm. it would be 15% IED and increases item drop rate. Those are the only two useful lines on rare. So if there's any characters that need those, I would just always, you know, filter all of the <laughs> familiars you get in your entire account to those and just reveal them. See if you get it. If you get it, lock it in. If you don't get it, um, extract it. And then you can, you know, maybe buy a booster pack later or have a little bit of a buffer for your energy, right? Mm -hmm. um, once you start actually training in the areas, yeah, it's a matter of just um, leveling up. Um, if you... I think as far as probably too early, maybe Moonridge is too early, but definitely once you are able to get into Labyrinth, it might be a good idea, and you might have a lot of familiars by then, hopefully, um, to try to make sure that you uh, level, uh, get to 10 medals. Okay. And then, and then um, or badges, I should say, sorry. And then that way you can unlock your three slots, right? 
and then you can have yeah. hopefully by then you have a big drop rate familiar or at least you know increases drop rate the rare line and then you can wear two familiars next to that so that you can level them up two at a time and then you know fuse them up together and hopefully make a whole bunch of um so if you don't have the large drop rate yet i would just say make mass epics and try to get that large drop rate line and then once you have the large drop rate line uh line then, then i would just make mostly uniques because you can still get really good stuff on a secondary line of a unique right because that's an epic line but you want those large healings you want maybe uh item steel you would there's some uh reflect memes i think there's boss damage id there's so many more outs so then mm -hmm. and there's also less pressure then because you'll definitely have two or three 15 percent ieds you have one or two maybe with like small healing already so you can do some healing and you have your large drop so you have a very solid foundation at that point so it's okay to you know gamble a little bit harder because you need <laughs> you need to get those good lines at that point uh so if you're looking for help on which badges to get you can use this this is part of the the bottom of the familiar uh guide the other thing that's on the bottom of the familiar guide talks about drop rate um, are you familiar with all of the, how that all works, all the percentages and what the familiars represent and all that? Uh, I normally just pull up your drop rate. Yeah, okay. Like, thing for familiars, yeah, so. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah. and then this is a list of like everything that you could possibly get. So if you're, mm -hmm. uh, ever, you know, wondering like, do I make epics or uniques? You know, you can basically just look at the list and see like, oh, there's only like two possible outcomes that will help me or there's like 15 of them, well then, uh, you know, it's kind of a no-brainer. But the uniques are quite uh, more expensive to make because of the fail chance, right? Only 40% chance to tear up. So you need mm -hmm. way more cards, um, you know, higher pay, uh, pay up, but uh, <laughs> definitely more expensive yeah. on, on average. Um, you were looking in general for, um, well, you have the meso drop rate, but you're still looking for um, large drop rate or the, or the regular drop rate? yeah just regular drop rate or large drop rate yeah 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 that would be great right because regular is about is 50 percent and the large is 100 percent oh uh, okay yeah and then that stacks with everything so you'll get way more cards you'll get way more droplets nodes you know everything just um gets gets increased quite a bit because even though it's additive for drop rate there aren't that many mm -hmm. sources so it's still a significant amount compared to where you're starting with right I, uh, yeah. Sh should I aim for the highest drop rate, or should I just, if I get like regular drop rate, like should I just take the fifty and and maybe try to get the hundred? Or, um, yeah, you. Well, I would definitely keep whatever is the highest drop rate. Definitely equip that so you can get more cards, right? That way you can start building your snowball and start rolling it down the hill. Hop, uh, hopefully, but I would definitely yeah. aim for getting a large uh drop rate if you find yourself you know already being um <laughs> like through through moonbridge and you're going towards uh limina maybe the the thing is to get good bossing and ied and healing and all of that you're going to need to make a bunch of uniques and mm -hmm. if you take forever to get a large drop rate you, you you want it but if you take forever you could also opt to just start making uniques at that point because you don't want to be stuck in like limina until 270 just because you don't have enough cards yet to to leave that area but we're talking like pretty far into the future now but it really sucks to be like 265 270 and know that you can train in the new areas but kind of be like well either i work on boss damage and drop rate familiars or something like that or on the other end i work on getting actual exp because your experience past like 260 and especially past 265 and towards 270 it's going to be horrible in in limina and you're basically just yeah. there to to get resources but in, experience isn't one of them anymore at that point and you'll see moving into cernium for most people will be two to two to two and a half times your exp income versus staying in limina around that point and then yeah mm -hmm. burning cernium but you'll need a little bit of time anyway to build up arcane uh the sacred power right once you get 260 because yeah. otherwise you just need so much damage to be able to kill the monster so there is a bit of a buffer um, but it'll depend on how quickly you want to level, you know, how quickly, how much you're playing it uh, still at that point, right? There, there'll be a bunch of factors. But I think the, the large drop rate is just so valuable that any character you're planning to eventually, you know, like Black Mage and maybe beyond, I would say try to get that large drop rate from unique, uh, from, from Epic, and then make uniques from then on. Because, yeah, 100% is just so massive. Because it'll help you with yeah. a lot of other stuff as well, right? It'll help you with like primals and the kind of treasure rings and the dominators and all of that stuff. And mm -hmm. 
to, to be able to get to that point. All right, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yep. Uh, anything else for familiars that you have questions on? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. I think I think I'm okay. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, flames. Okay, flames and familiars good. Yeah, flames familiars good. We're flying okay. by. Yep, and those were the main, the two main things that you had, right? Uh, and then like loose things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Two main loose things. Yep. Anything else that came to mind you want to ask about? Uh, nodes and like acquiring nodes. Yes, nodes and drop rate, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so one of them is get a drop rate familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, Get a job it's just so here. massive. Um, the other yeah. one is building up your legion as, so that your coins can be perhaps spent towards that, towards drop rate coupons. Because drop rate coupons yeah. do stack with familiars. That's why they're so good as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is, of course, uh, drop rate gear. And then the other thing is totems. And then the other thing is rotating your map properly and getting your monsters killed per hour, perhaps loot rotations, perhaps vac pets, you know, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are basically all the things that go into it. How's your drop and mezzo situation looking? Terrible, honestly. You have one drop said... rate line, I think. Or... Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, I a... have... Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I scrolled like... all the way down. Okay, okay. There's a bit more stuff here. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, more... They're normally item drop, but, like, there's, like, almost like no mezzo mm -hmm. uh, on anything i think the only mezzo would be on yeah you have a double item right here the awake ring nice of course the awake ring that's yeah. definitely the yeah. one you wanted that on <laughs> yeah like i rolled it and i was like all right i might as well keep it let's get some ins oh there's yeah. mezzo and drop yeah <laughs> yeah it's never happened so to I anyone said, else okay. before yeah yeah beautiful yeah um, but yeah, no, like, other than that, it's, it's just been a lot of item drop. Yeah. I, I don't fully, like, mezzo farm, and mm -hmm. I spend most of my time, like, making my money from bossing and whatnot. But sure. Yeah, again, like, I'm, I'm unsure of if these are, like, really good pieces or not, because mm -hmm. I think, like, a lot of people have told me, like, oh, you're going to need to need, like, two line mezzo and one line int, or one line drop, excuse me. Mm -hmm. or, or something like that but again i don't know the costs to those and i don't really want to overspend costs on things like that so i'm not 100 sure. sure um yeah. yeah so the you know if you have so the things you want to, all your damage to come from is your weapon secondary and emblem your nodes your um and that already shows one of your issues <laughs> and then your symbols <laughs> right symbols is logging mm -hmm. in every day doing the yada 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 uh, WSE is, you know, just one by one, just tapping them up. Your WSE is solid, so that's already good. And then your mm -hmm. nodes is in there. But what does nodes rely on is getting them from events, getting them from drops. And where, so what yeah. do you also need to work on, you need to work on your drop rate gear. And drop and mezzo is typically just goes hand in hand to help you out with that. And if your foundation of your legion, your WSE, your nodes, your symbols, if those are good, then you don't need any damage from your accessory pieces and you can just fully go for drop rate or mezzo. Typically it's around, I would say one bill, maybe a little bit more, but around one bill to get a potential from just absolute nothing to having at least a line of drop or mezzo and then just moving on to the next piece and then every, th every time you're getting a piece with one of them, you can move on to the next one. You have nine accessories that can get anything, right? So then you get into the, where's the drop rate one, right? You basically get into this little um, info infograph here, right? Yeah. So you want to see if you can get five lines of mezzo, four lines of drop, so that every single monster you kill drops a bag. And you don't need exactly four, right, for 20%, because that'll go over. But you want more notes. You want more uh, twisted times. You want more. You, you want everything <laughs> that drops, basically. You want to increase the chance. Might not be mezzo mm -hmm. bags, but it still increases all the other stuff. So that's a very... Um, so that's very useful. That's why you go higher on the drop rate. And if you find yourself making something that gives drop rate, but you already have four or more, you can also just re-roll whatever has drop rate and doesn't have any intellect along with it and re-roll that one for mezzo so that you can start making more money immediately. Because right now you're in that mm -hmm. situation, right? Where there's a few pieces um, that don't give you any damage aside from the drop rate. And those pieces might do better right now as a mezzo piece because you might not be spending your time specifically to make money, 
But if you are mm. training and you're training at good rates and you're killing monsters quickly, you will be getting more money as well. And the overall value of your totems will go up. And now, especially since kana farming is completely gone and the other the only way to really scale up is with extra bossing, you're going to need to get all of the value you can out of your totems because that value will have to be invested into characters for bossing. And bossing, you know, mez mezzo per hour wise, bossing is more efficient than, than kana farming but only for like half an hour a week. <laughs> so you to, okay. to scale up on that, you're going to need to, the, the primary investment, because, you know, like we said, it's like only like a billion per piece. So if you're doing a kind of farmer, you know, you spend like three bill, maybe like four on the WSE, you spend nine on the accessories. Now you're like 13 bill in, you get everything else, you know, like some Star Force, but you got like 20 to 25 bill. Your kind of farmer is like completely done, can go to a high area and can start printing money. If you want a boss mule, you need basically almost the same level of funding, but spread over more pieces, right? So if you have more epics and more uniques, and you, you do a little bit more on the flaming part and a little bit more on the star forcing part, and you do way more on the terms of boss damage, IED, so it's gonna be more legion heavy. But at that point, you do roughly the same amount of funding if you want to include like Lotus and Damien, but then you can make that money, but only like half an hour a week, right? So the initial investment is way higher. And to be able to start making that, um, that you know, economy of scale almost, um, you're going to need your foundation mm -hmm. of your main character that makes money through Ursus and through Maple Tour and through training and through doing the totems and the bosses that it can do. That foundation has to be way more solid because you can't just jump into, you know, doubling up how much money you make per week. A lot of that proportion of that is going to come from your training. So the Mesoptine gear is, is very vital, I think. Vital. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, for example, like, Greed Pendant is okay. Um, I'm okay with the Greed Pendant with drop rate because, um, well, maybe not. Maybe it's better to have one with Mezzo because, well, okay. you want item drop rate, right? It's like, a, like you're going to get items more from bosses than from, or yeah. equipment, equipment drop rate. You're going to get equipment more from bosses, but it also it hits you a little bit harder in the loss of damage. But therefore, I think drop rate and Greed Pendant probably goes better together. So, like, the Flame Ring, maybe, that you're using, um... That you're using that has no lines other than that. I probably reroll that one for Mezzo, okay. so that you have at least something coming from that. And then you'll still have right. a total of four lines of drop and one line of Mezzo. But then you go to four and two instead of four and one. And again, because Mezzo obtain has not a lot of sources, and it but it is additive. But you add them all together, and now it's a significant increase in how much money you make. Mm -hmm. So the the Mezzo obtain part is just from the equips from the Legion coupon, from your inner ability, and from the wealth uh, acquisition potions, right? The WAPs. Yeah. Basically all of, all of those three together. And yeah, the 100% that you can get from your equips is a massive part of that. And you can capitalize on it because you have the drop rate for the bags. So now you get full efficiency on them. Okay. So do you have an idea which, um, which other accessories you might be looking into to uh, complete the set with? Um, honestly, no, uh, I'll, I'll be real. Mm -hmm. Um, I know it's like my event rings will turn into drop rings and, and mesotane rings at some point. Yeah. Uh, it's just about me finding the pieces to get it. Like, uh, literally this week, I only just got my Connor treasure ring mm -hmm. and there's no stars. There's, there's no nothing on it right now. So yeah. Until well, I can, a, it's a piece that can do something. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, but it's until I can like get it to like seventeen stars mm -hmm. to then be able to replace like one of my rings that I have currently equipped right now. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, because I but remember it's not that bad, right? Ball. You don't want your piece, your accessory pieces, to feel like they need to do a whole lot of the lifting. I'm assuming if you're training in the areas where you train, you're just destroying it, right? The, the most, yeah. the biggest thing that you could be doing is increasing your node levels and your arcane power. That's where a lot of the final damage comes from, right? That scales with everything. But just the mm -hmm. intellect on a few of the rings, that should be okay to drop that without feeling like a loss of, of, of gains. Uh, for the bosses, to be a little bit of time. But again, you want to invest in making that money first so that when the events come around, you can capitalize on the events. Because what you're doing now is a little bit more like going straight for damage and for the next part. And that works very well for quite a while. But then you get to the point where you... Um, um, you get to the point where the next upgrade is just so expensive 
that it doesn't really make much sense to to keep like trying to brute force the the damage or it, mm -hmm. it basically comes down to being brute forcing you're not intentionally trying to do that um but it might be it feels like a detour but investing into the mezzo and and item gear first and having that just work for you for a while and staying within the bosses that you're doing when then an up when an event comes and you have time to have backups you smash those two together make a big upgrade and now you can do those new bosses and then also you will significantly see a difference in the lower level bosses how quickly you can do those plus in total you will have spent less money because every single small upgrade you make every next upgrade is always more expensive for how much you get there's always like marginal uh, loss uh, in the returns of how much you're spending right like every next intellect you're trying to gain is always a little bit more expensive than the one you just made every single time. So if you could do it all in one go, instead of doing like incremental, um, you'll feel it more and it'll be more efficient. And at the end of the day, you'll just be able to make more upgrades with less money. But there's a longer period of you sitting on <laughs> where you're at. And the further you go, the more you will feel that that is probably the way to go. In the beginning, I'm, I'm usually pretty like, yeah, just throw whatever money on your character because every single um, amount of money you throw at your character is still a gain, right? It's the, the chance of not making a gain is super low, so you can just go. But the further you go, um, if you spend like five mil, if in my, in my situation I spent five bills like four times, the chance that I didn't make a single upgrade every single time is probably like 90% or something. But if I spend 20 bill one time, maybe there's only like a 20% chance that I don't make a single upgrade, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're just going to get closer and closer to that point and you're probably feeling that a little bit where you're like, I can't just do like make one bill, spend one bill anymore uh, <laughs> because it'll just feel like you're not really making a dent in things because, again, because of diminishing returns on everything. Yeah. So I think you'd be okay to convert like your Chaos Ring, for example. Um, or you can already start with the rings that are um, that are already legendary. That's the cheapest, right? Because you don't have to look for the tier up cost. But of course, you're rolling over more stat. But I think you'd be okay to try to roll the Chaos Ring up to legendary and get that Mezzo obtain on there. And then maybe on the okay. Master SS, you combine that with the um, with the other ring. And now, um, and now you have four and four, right? And then you only need one more line of uh, of Mezzo on like an eye or a face or something. Uh, maybe like monocle, I guess. Yeah, because you have the black bean mark that has 24, and you have the monocle that's 12. Yeah, you kind of want to wonder what, like what's the goal there. The monocle is at 27, so at this mar at this point, I probably just roll over the black bean mark, right? Oh. Well, what's gonna happen? And I don't know how close you are to this, but what's gonna happen once you get the superior? is that you, um, the superior pieces plus the sweet order pieces are just basically gonna completely tear apart the boss accessory set. And then if you're mobbing and you get all the boss accessory set together, you get those flame advantage pieces, you get those set bonus pieces together, and that'll be like part of the buffer as well to make sure you're not losing as much damage when you're switching into drop gear. Mm -hmm. But the, um, since, since you have 27 on the monocle and 24 here, the Black Bee Mark is probably going to still feel better because of the flame and the set bonus, right? Yeah. Um, but you're, since you already have both of them and they're both at legendary, what it basically comes down to is like who goes to 17 the first. But the Black Bean Mark um, can basically take exactly the same function as the Sweet Water Monocle. The only downside is slightly lower potential, right? But it has better uh, flame score, so that kind of balances out. But the thing with a monocle is that you can go past 20. So... Uh, mm -hmm. And the other thing is that you can sli slightly more reliably get backups. But if you feel like you find a lot of black beam marks, right now they're very similar. Um, whichever one you roll is probably not, it's probably up to you. You can roll which, which one you want, honestly. But um, again, whatever roll you get, and this goes back to the rings and stuff as well, whatever roll you get kind of just determines what function it gets. Because whether it's a 17 star kind of treasure, or a 16 star reinforced, or it's a chaos ring, or it's no one new, they're all roughly similar. Um, the big event rings are definitely quite a bit stronger, but um, e eventually, like you said, they'll become drop in Mesogear anyway. So the it, it's just the potential that determines the function, so that you can just go, you know, like oh, this gets drop and intellect. Maybe even that you roll like a superior ring, or um, right, you get a superior ring and it rolls drop and meso. That's not what you want, but that's the function right now. So you just go. 
right? Because that way with mm -hmm. minimum amount of money invested, you can get maximum returns. And then, you know, once you've made all your money and then you want to min max and you want to make sure you have a drop in meso set and you have uh, a boss set and you have them separately, you know, you're getting everything to 17, everything to line legendary, then you have the money that you've made from those pieces and then you can commit to like splitting them up again. And yeah, you're hurting yourself a little bit in the early game and then the bosses that you can jump to is going to be a little bit slower. But in the end, you know, if you're eventually trying to go to Black Mage, you'll get there much faster. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then so I should reroll my pink bean mark. Um, yeah, well, c considering like flames and set bonus and all of that, rather you roll the pink bean mark or sweet water monocle, it's probably going to be roughly the same for you, right? Because okay. uh, like the flame could be a little bit better on the monocle, but again, it's not flame advantage, so that's not really like a huge uh, thing. Uh, did you consider uh, what you're going to do with like the 17 star scroll or something? Did, did you do you think that's something you're going to go for? Oh, in the shop. Yeah. Because that's um, that's always something good to keep in the back of your head, head, right? Like it's like where where is that going to go? Okay, right now I I wasn't actually like thinking of getting that. Okay, that's like, fine too, because it's expensive. <laughs> it's a lot of coins. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is for the event shop right now, uh, I did the math and pretty much I can get like the like all the nodes and um, I think lock line to Esfera symbols, mm -hmm. but I'm not a hundred percent sure if I should do that uh, because you, even you said during this stream you're like. Uh, those are very expensive and mm -hmm. they could be a little bit cost efficient so yeah they could be a little bit inefficient yeah it depends on sometimes you buy all of them out and you have to like cap for three weeks just so you get like five days of progress you know sometimes symbols are actually just like that <laughs> and then you have to mm -hmm. wonder if, if that is worth is that the best thing you can do for your account it's possible but you just kind of have to compare and in the end it just comes back to, down to time right like this is going to save me 20 minutes of time over five days okay this is worth like an hour and 20 minutes for me or like this is the same as an upgrade that cost me 1.7 bill and i make about 300 mil an hour so this is like four hours of grinding to me but you know minus the exp so maybe you know it's worth like two hours or something you know like you cut it in half th 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 mm -hmm. that's like a way that you can kind of make sure the same thing with the flames right and same thing with the upgrades right just throwing it in because so many pieces are just seem so detached so you've got to find some kind of way so that you're not comparing apples and oranges but you're comparing, you know, apples with slightly bigger or smaller apples. And that way you can make it easier for yourself to determine, like, where do my priorities lie. But, yeah, nodes is, yeah, number one. I would say, though, that the, the experience nodes are too expensive, in my opinion. I don't, I don't okay. think they're very... They're like a thousand each, and you get the value of, of two nodes or three nodes from it. I always forget how much mm -hmm. it is because it's way too little. Um... It definitely get like the the separate just the separate node stones, but I think the EXP ones are, are just too pricey. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. So if you don't know what the scroll is going yet, but yeah, Black Bean Mark, you'll get backups over time, so you'll be able to just send a 17. You know, once you get to that point, um, without backups, if that becomes more intellect, you know, if, if you roll more intellect on the Black Bean Mark, then you roll the monocle again, right? Mm hmm. And just to, yeah, the, let the potential guide you, I would say. Is that scroll transferable, by any chance? Uh, the scroll? Ooh, I would have to go into the... It's it's a buy from the shop, right? I th think it might be... Let me check. Oh, I've not started the event here yet? Nope. Okay, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to teleport it in. Uh, no worries. Boom. Starlight Melody Shop, is that the one? Oh, I have to talk to this lady first. Because I don't even have any points yet on this character. Oh. It's the Mezzo one. Yeah, we have the... Yeah, this one is transferable, yeah. So you could farm okay. for it on a mule and then uh, hop and it over. Yeah, give it over. Yeah. yeah probably what I'm gonna do. And there's the event ring exclusive legendary. That's also quite nice for 5k. Mm -hmm. But then I would determine, I mean, the one thing you want to look out for is that you don't end up with like 14 legendary rings on a character because then <laughs> then that efficiency is gonna be tanking a bit, right? Yeah. And it can happen uh, if you're not 
Exactly. Because now you have like over oh, superior pen, uh, superior ring is gonna come. Sorry, kind of treasure ring is gonna come. Maybe later mm -hmm. Meister and Slime, and you already have you know eight, nine, ten rings. So you you probably want to start, start looking out for not going too crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of rings. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a lot of bills, right? And then they have their value, but if you end up with like five legendary rings in your inventory that you can't really use for anything doesn't feel terribly good it's like mm, maybe this could have been a little bit more streamlined and that's why i'm okay in the beginning with just being like mezzo and drop and your accessories basically just don't give you any intellect that's fine until you have everything 17 everything legendary you're like setting up and you're splitting between the, the drop mezzo and the damage set because you'll just get to that point faster and then you can do that split faster all right yeah cause... yeah i words i don't know uh <laughs> yeah no yeah yeah i get what you're saying though yeah was it uh were you trying to say something like another thought you had and how it like conflicts with that or uh no no i don't i don't think i was trying to conflict anything it's okay. it's more like um I, I okay i guess i just have this like tendency of like always aiming for like best and slot mm -hmm. you know but i know that's like i know especially you will say like that's a really like bad mindsets uh because it, it could hold you back aiming... yeah 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 it's great to it, go for if you know that you're like gaming at least 40 to 50 hours a week and you're like you know you, your only goal is to get to the best to the to the end line then you want to aim mm. for the best in slot stuff and you know you can rely on a little bit weaker gear here and there but in general you want to be moving in that direction um, if you're going to be moving slower and you don't know exactly if you're even going to get that far, it's better to go for like the sure thing, go for the, the biggest bang for your buck, um, investments that will just definitely give you a lot of value. And then if you keep playing, like you said, you know, like the 21 star. Yeah. But you can still go for like 19 star CRA if you have enough money. Right. So that it, everything gets right. to that point. But once you have the money, you know, and you basically have everything else um upgrade it's like well, well i might as well just think you know yolo something up to 21 when there's an event and see if i can transfer over or get my cra to 21 and, and sit on that but it's if you don't have that goal that's fine too but then you have to make decisions that um don't aim, that's necessarily aim for that highest because it's always best in slot is best in slot only because of how well it's upgraded and what the other mm -hmm. pieces are that it is working together with an item by itself is almost never best in slot the only exception is like a genesis weapon i would say Gotcha. And that's because it has like an iframe and a final damage skill and it comes fully 22 star upgraded. So it's pretty undeniable when you get that. But every other piece only becomes best in slot because of how well you upgrade it and what it works together with set bonuses and stuff. Okay. Yeah. So can I can I ask? Um, no. Yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so should I wait for like because I heard that KMS had Shining Star Force. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure we are not getting it, but maybe they'll surprise us. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. But like, should I? But like, should I wait for like either a five, ten, fifteen to like Star Force more? Because that's kind of what I've been waiting for, so that I can hit maybe like seventeen on everything, and then maybe start moving my CRA gear to like twenty-one because mm -hmm. I have a lot of backups. So. Well, are you trying to get the um, the Absolute weapon is probably one of the biggest upgrades, right? In the in the short term. Yeah. Um, that that I'm getting in like a couple weeks. So. Okay. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That that'll be a big um. There'll be a big money sink as well, right? Because you want a really good flame. You want a really good potential. You want to get the 17 star. Maybe the scroll, right? <laughs> that would be mm. a good thing. The other thing is yeah. you might not need the scroll because you have a 16 star Fafnir. You can transfer hammer it over because the Fafnir will be dead in the water otherwise. And at least you'll have an epic 15 star immediately. And if there's a 5 and 15 and you can get the weapon around that time, you can immediately start from 15, get it to 17 very easily. Only you have to tear it up and get an okay flame and then you're done, right? So you can basically see this as like an epic potential scroll and a 15 star scroll in one. Okay. Because yeah. you kind of want to avoid, again, what they talked about with the rings. The main thing with the rings is also there's no transferability whatsoever with rings. So all of that value is lost. And because we don't have trade and reboot, right? So if you're having something mm -hmm. like a Fuff in your side limiter, unless you're incredibly emotionally attached to it, it's just, it feels bad to transfer it into the Abzo. But what feels even worse is full spending on the Abzo and then holding this thing in your inventory and never using it. So. You, right. know, you can at least move some of the damage, uh, move some of the value up back to the higher pieces. 
Um, yeah, the other stuff is moving into um, moving into superior, but again, you know, you have the reinforced belt that you can do the same thing with, right? Transformer mm -hmm. over, come, becomes epic, becomes 15 star immediately, so that's uh, that, that's like done. Um, the I mean, the flames in general, you'll be able to see like what is an obvious priority and what isn't. Uh, you've right. got the reinforced earrings as legendary 21. Yeah, so that, that's that's one of those things where I think in the grand scheme of things, if you already have the um, the legendary like the Deocitus earrings, I would just have those as like my quote unquote my damage earrings. But I can do that because I have my legion and my link skills picking up more slack, right? So I don't need mm -hmm. to push as hard on those equips. So I can save a lot of money there and then wait for those events. So to circle back to what you asked, like with the star forcing, um, I think the main thing is to get your drop and music gear on point and to give yourself mm -hmm. time for for general backups. And then um, first m try to make the jump, like you said, to get everything to 17. But then, then the step after that is probably to work more on potentials. Not like, you know, three lining everything, but basically bringing up most stuff up to legendary, making sure that the flames equally like get up there. Maybe not purposefully like buying flames, but you know, for weapon, you probably want to buy if you get a Dominator Pendant, you probably want to buy so you can, you know, transpose, get that Sweetwater Pendant in there. If you get a Pat Mark, you want to you wanna buy because you probably want to get a nice flame on that for transpose into a Pat Mark, uh, into a right. Monocle. Um, but other than that, yeah, I don't want to tell you, like, it's, you're not allowed to Star Force unless there's an event. But I think what the events kind of do is they kind of protect you from throwing away your money inefficiently in the sense that mm -hmm. it'll just... Again, what I talked about in the beginning, like it'll just take longer until you get to an amount of money where you can guarantee yourself an upgrade. And once you have your mezzo gaining capabilities like built up, you will need time to recuperate and to, to you know to get back cash so you can even use an event. So I would still use the 30% mm -hmm. offs to, to get up to 15 stars. And whether you can do an item like that to 15 or not will depend on if you have backups or not, right? and then mm -hmm. use 5, 10, 15 events to get up to 17. Now, if you get Shining Star Force, then that's definitely, you know, that might push things a little bit f uh, forward and you just do as much as you can during that because efficiency is going to be off the off the scale. Um, if there is no uh, Shining Star Force, which again, KMS also had it in the second part of the event, so it's still, you know, don't lose hope yet, uh, young one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it is maybe possible, but yeah, don't... Yeah, um, yeah, a little bit of hopium, exactly. Um, but don't own D on it, you know. Um, but the um, if, even if there isn't one of those, the they're, they're most likely will just be a regular 5, 10, 15 anyway. And then that'll be your go-ahead um, regardless to, to push. But again, we don't have one announced now, so that'll also be part of the second event anyway. Which, you okay. know, sometimes people are discouraged or disappointed when there's no event. To me, that just means, oh, so I get to make more money, make a bigger jump, and be more efficient when the next event comes around. You know, try to see the silver lining on that. Yeah, okay, yeah. I just noticed there's like some, the, ra the, 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 um, the shoulders have like a rainbow color on them. It's like green oh. into yellow into orange into red. I never noticed that before. I never noticed it either. So, wait, for Absolab, I should get them to legendary, is what you're saying? So, yeah, um, most likely, because you'll want to be like Abzo 17, you know, maybe CRA 19, everything else 17, everything two line legendary. Oh. WC is already a little bit beyond. Good flames, you know, those flame scores. And then you'll basically, with that, uh, as long as you're symbols your nodes all of that is in order and your legion and your links are good then with that you'll be able to do like hard lucid hard will oh, okay once you're like around 250 uh, and then you can decide yeah. like i'm gonna go high abzo because fuck all this or i'm just gonna slowly save up and wait for arcane and move into that and you and take that towards like tenebrous bosses gotcha I, yeah i only ask because um i've seen in some of your videos you're like don't always potential everything to legendary because mm -hmm. you might not always keep that specific piece of gear yeah and so that's why i've just been holding on to like epic app so the unique shoes i literally got lucky with the master crab cube mm -hmm. and it just tiered so mm -hmm. well so if your abzo was like 12 stars then i would say keep it epic do the fodder instead right during the events and then transfer mm -hmm. hammer over into it so you can immediately get a 15 to 16 to 17 because that'll save money and then redo the potential because you're you that's that would be like efficiently uh that would be efficient financially 
But if they're mm -hmm. already 17 and then they're epic, then you can commit more to the potential because you're not going to be rolling over that potential anymore. It's like order of operation, you know, it's a little PEMDAS uh, <laughs> kind of thing or whatever abbreviation you use, right? Right. <laughs> and then, oh, should I also be aiming for Absolute Cape or should I just keep the Tyrant one? Um, yeah, I, so I think if you hit, now, if your cape was already like unique or legendary, um, and it had like some kind of bomb ass flame, I would say like put two stars on it and don't worry about the Abzo cape. Um, mm -hmm. This is like an okay cape, you know, as a, definitely as an upgrade from whatever it was before that can hold you mm -hmm. over. But typically the set bonus for, for the Abzo is still quite nice. It's not as top heavy anymore, right? But it's still quite nice. Um, but this is like my general philosophy on all upgrades you want to make sure that an upgrade is functional, right? Let's say that you get to the point where you have the weapon, you have all the other stuff, you can kill all the bosses around your level, you're not really feeling weak, there's still a whole lot of stuff that you're actively working on and improving, and mm -hmm. you, ha you you get a better feel for, this is what 1 billion mesos can get me, this is what 5 billion mesos can get me, and you look at the the expected cost of the cape, and it's like 3 bill or something, and how much that's going to really get you compared to what you already have. Maybe you're like, Fuck it, I can, I can mob where I want, I can boss what I want, I'm just gonna mm. make like a bigger jump and maybe maybe I'll just get the arcane cape first or something, you know? Okay. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's possible. Okay. It's definitely not as important anymore because of the set bonus change. And, and bonus uh, base stats on Tyrant is just really nice, so... Yeah. And flame advantage, right. so, you know, not as much pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you have any questions um, regarding the Matrix or Legion? Um, I mean, Legion, I'm going to hit 6k probably today because I have a Terra Burn dual oh, blade. The burning? Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so that's going to be done today, like last 100 levels. Mm -hmm. And then... Is that 6k or are you going to redo that mess in the middle because it's all my OCD is <laughs> yeah. <all> <laughs> uh, yeah it's gonna get redone you were um, like I'm so close to 6k bit. fuck it I'll just <laughs> I'll do it later yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 no that's okay that's okay yeah, yeah typically then, you want to um, put those um you want to put the archer pieces in the middle right you can make a like nice flat connection between the the sides yeah that's, it might make it it's good foundation to start with yeah mm -hmm. and then that's 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 not a big problem. But no, yeah. Can you uh, actually can you double check my nodes, see if they're sure. pretty decent? I guess. Yeah, I don't think tri nodes changed at all anything for kinesis, right? So you got two. No, I don't think so. Two sets, and when you're bursting, you're slamming that metal press, I believe, right? You're just raining it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're the oh the BPM only consuming when you actually hit. Do you notice uh, like that, and then the hyper skill with the extra recovery, right? Do you notice your psychic power being like way easier to manage now? Yes, it is. BPM only on hit is it's probably the uh, best. Huge, right? Yeah, it's so it's such quality oh, it's of life. Huge. It's just a small thing to mention, but it's like that. So I think it's that, and then it's the the thing you place on the ground has like a lower cooldown and a longer duration as well, right? The one that like generates. Yeah, it yeah, and then the, so and the regeneration nice. instead of fifty percent of what's left, it always gives you fifty percent of the total, right? Yes. So it, those it's... those three things together is like so much easier regen, yeah. and then that makes it easier for your during your burst for your uh, metal press to just keep spamming it, I believe. Yeah, it's nice. It's just um, Kinesis has so many like keys that <laughs> Buttons, you have to press. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it becomes very hard where, like, you know, you bind loose and you gotta press like five million buttons. So, yeah, like, we gotta press like three first, then bind. Hope they're still there. <laughs> Don't start doing a yeah. laser attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably a good idea is like right after a laser or right after a touch or something, or like near the end of whatever that sequence is, start prepping your stuff. So that, and then as soon as you see her, you can immediately bind and some of the stuff is already going, you know? Mm hmm. And then, okay. you know, maybe, because, again, like you said, the bind is pretty short. So you want to make sure that during that 10 seconds, you're doing everything. And not that you're doing the bind, and then you have to press, like, four more skills. Because now half of your bind is already lost, right? Right. So the biggest damage dealers, you want to pop before, 
and then and uh, preferably like right after an attack because then usually you know she wants to do a sickle or two first you know and then if you have to you can ethereal form them and stand close and then at least your bpm can do some damage right <laughs> but um yeah. if you have to jump around or you dodge stuff during or, or prep a lot more skills during your bind that will hurt you disproportionately yeah uh, i don't see anything you're like terribly um missing wait is this one is this one not supposed to be maxed first? Um. Oh, that one. Okay. Oh honestly, no, is, oh sorry, that is. It's twenty-five. I'm special. Um. Wait, <laughs> do you get a golden border around? Oh, that's because it's a special type skill, right? It's yeah. It's a. It requires psychic points, so. Yeah. It's yeah. A, nice, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. No, I thought it was. I thought it was like the the boost stone. It's like, wait, why is the boost stone only thirty? Why is it only in one of your <laughs> <laughs> boost those? But that's the other. That's the the, the grab. Yeah, it's like a grab. Yeah, yeah. That mm -hmm. one's sixty. Okay, okay. But you've got the regular hey, uh, two for two setup. Um. Oh, do you have a few? Wait, do you have a few triple boosted? No. So I have a trio with um, with the train, psychic like grab and um, kinetic point combo or something like that i can't remember um which is the only reason why it has the trio that, like it's supposed to be my second one i think but um oh you don't have mind break right because that's it's basically just a buff not really there for damage yeah like i don't have mind break like yeah so you have two yeah, extra like, well you have two extra grabs yeah. or i just have like one extra grab that pretty much brings it to 60. oh one extra grab one extra press and one extra bpm and then one less um, psychic drain, it, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, once you start going far over sixty on those, um, then it'll make more sense to like spread them out again, right? Mhm. Mm uh, but until then, I, I mean, I assume that that's where <laughs> pretty much all of your damage is coming from. So it's more important to boost those early. Yeah. But start keeping an eye out for the other nodes that could start uh, replacing it because you got one that's 25 but another boost node that's still 12 right so comparatively that one can still get a whole lot of value still for the um like per per point basically per per shard yeah maybe i i i guess i'm just like so fixated on like getting to 25 but then i realize like it'll cost me like seven nodes just to level up once which yeah. is a lot you want to yeah. see it the same way as like not go rushing to legendary because if you have two mm -hmm. items with nine percent intellect that's way cheaper than one item with 18 percent intellect than the other item or one item with 15 percent and the other with three right it's always cheaper more efficient to like get let it go evenly spread out those resources you'll just get yeah especially if it's about yeah. final damage again right then you just want to get um like like way in the beginning, if you just take five nodes and you put them in level uh, five slots, but they're all level one, but then you get mm -hmm. six times five, then you get thirty levels, right? Versus one max in one slot would also be thirty levels. But it's like it's right. so much cheaper, right? So yeah, yeah, that's how you wanna they wanna see your slots. One thing I will say is um, you have your um, sharp eyes in a leveled up slot. I would put uh, and your um, um, your infinity thing. Um, no, your mana overload. Um, I probably yeah. either put for bossing, either put your uh, your two fifth job skills in there, like your goddess blessing and your uh, black hole thing. Okay. Um, yeah. Or for mobbing, put the two like you know mobbing skills in there. Whatever helps you more with the metal, because I think that might help you also with the metal press um, level, right? Okay. Oh no, metal press is no metal press is already in. Like, but your train, I think, yeah, it'll double up your train as well. So that's like ten okay, levels. Yeah. So that's twenty percent final damage on that on those skills, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Or yeah. sorry, twenty twenty percentage points final damage. <laughs> kind of an important distinction because you don't want to confuse the additive and the multiplicative, right? Right. Um, yeah, that's that's probably something that just you know you just switch them around one time and then they just kind of stuck there. But leveled up slots are really valuable, so make sure that you have your valuable skills in there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, um, yeah, other than that, it seems pretty solid, I guess. Um, one thing I might... Oh, one thing I do like more is to put the, the True Regnant Reflection there instead of Decent Defense Blessing. Decent Defense Blessing, you know, does something, but I don't think you ever want to take it unless it's 
at the earliest the bottom row of the first page of your matrix. Before that, I don't think it, you ever want it. It just doesn't scale well enough. And the True Reflection oh, really? will just help you as a summon for mobbing, and it'll help you extra damage for bossing. Most of the time, you'll want decent... Um, I don't know. Do you need decent speed infusion, actually? I uh, Honestly, I don't know. Like, Let me check. I th yeah, like decent attack speed please. or decent... Um, uh, or decent combat orders are pretty much all uh, the most of the time all uh, there before decent fuzz blessing ever comes in mm -hmm. uh, Kinesis Spell yes, you want DSI. Yeah, so I would probably throw a DSI in there if you can get grab one and throw that one in instead of the blessing Yeah. Okay Good to know actually nope. Nope. And then so here, Other than that other than that, don't neglect the decent holy symbol, right? Throw, throw yeah. something in there every now and then, because you get your uh, EXP and your drop rate, so more nodes, you know? One of those little things that will help you build a snowball. Mm hmm And then... Is there anything else I need to talk about, Kinesis? Um... Hyper skills, hyper stats... Um... Did I you? I guess for for the Legion board, the the fact that the normal monster damage is there, did are you? Did you think about that on how to use that? Um. I guess if you're not building honestly, your Legion really past six k, then it, it like here's the thing. Like I think if you're building up your Legion, it could be really nice. Um, yeah. Probably better than bonus EXP just to you know kill even faster and higher levels. But until you're going into Cernium or burning Cernium, you probably will never need normal damage because. You're just going to be blowing everything up because of your arcane power and your boost nodes, so it's probably yeah. totally fine to to ignore it until you get that far in. Yeah, it, for me right now, I don't need like I just one like touch everything, mm -hmm. so everything dies in like one hit. So mm -hmm. there's no full need for it on my kinesis, but uh, I am starting like a battle mage secondary mule. Okay. So maybe I'll put it in there for like page two of legion or whatever yeah yeah okay uh one thing i just noticed is your um hyperstats there's a a 14 in there which at your level <laughs> usually is a little bit of a red flag so uh yeah so i guess it, it's because like Right now, I just have like no ID, and um, yeah, you're 89. Are you you're calculating in your debuff? No, this is like full buffed. Or I guess I'm missing like the arc link, and like maybe mind break, but that's about it. But mind break. I don't so think mind break is final damage, right? And arc is percentage damage. Yeah. But the um, you have functional. Do you know about functional ID, visual ID? Yeah, yeah. Um, visual is what you see. Functional is like all your debuffs and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And because you have one I guess it's debuff, right? Is it a is it like fifteen percent or something? Is it? I I don't even remember. The, uh, it's the, like the it's like a yellow thing, like a yellow circle, right? Oh yeah, is it? I think it's either fifteen or thirty. I can't remember. Yeah, it's, some things are 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, like they'll do the 40, there's a 50, you yeah. know. But I the believe, only reason... Yeah. Sorry, the only reason why it's like 14 on there is because I literally put my stats in a calculator and they were like, put 14 in ID. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's possible. But when I, what I see, and, and that's basic, but this is like the same thing as looking at the flame calculator for right now. And seeing how good a flame is, and something, and the flame says you you need to roll six percent all stat because you have no stat yet, and that could be really good for you now. But then a little mm -hmm. bit later, you'll have to redo it because the balance will reset, and then stat and uh, you know like twenty stat and and three percent might have been way better, you know. Uh, and this is kind of what's going to happen as well. No, hyper stats are way easier to switch now, right? You just do another preset, boom. You pay, only pay three bill. You click a click a little bit. But when I see this. And when you need this much IED, what it tells me Im immediately is that there's a huge comparative advantage right now to working on IED in general in your account. 
and also making definitely sure that you 100% have all of your sources listed for your functional. Because if you forget to mention even one one or two sources in your functional, it might actually mean that you can go down like three levels of IED, like two or three levels of IED, very expensive levels, and those could come back as a whole bunch of critical damage, a whole bunch of damage and, and boss damage, you know? Uh, so that's the, and the other thing is also once you get your Legion to 6k and you can have the full IED grid, um, do you have things like the Explorer Mage uh, Link skill? Uh, I only have like one, mm -hmm. and that's it. So, I, yeah, so I three of those plan... together is nine percent, right? Your grid yeah. um, will go from thirty to forty, which is not quite ten percent, but it's like it's actually more efficient than ten percent because it's a bigger clump. So those two together, the nineteen percent, that'll probably be enough to get your ID down. The other big thing that's coming uh, that you don't have is a line. You don't have a line of uh, ID on your weapon secondary or emblem, right? And that's yeah. usually where early on you can get a very valuable uh, role. Uh, and the other thing is the superior Golic stuff, but that's probably a little bit further away because you need quite a bit of damage to to bring that guy down. So what will probably uh, be really good for you, I think, is see if you can get another ID familiar, right? That'll help you a lot. Um, yep. And see, you know, once you get the 6k Legion, building it up and getting the Explorer Mage skill, um, and then redoing the calcula calculations. Also, if you're going to do the potential on your weapon and you get an ID line there, that could also be temporarily a really good thing to just settle on because that'll help you basically take all the pressure off of your hyperstats and then mm -hmm. once you get the superior golic set then you can redo your weapon and then go for full boss and, and magic attack because then that id will be taken care of by the set bonus of superior okay yeah it's a build of the, of the puzzle but make sure you double check on the on the on the debuff i, I thought it's 15 percent, but i'm not 100 uh... yeah i can double check mm-hmm Um, yeah, because that 14, yeah, those extra three, like 11 or something around your level can happen, but the extra three, again, it's probably most efficient for damage output, but it means that there is something that you can get a lot of value from just working a bit more on IED, and then that'll just come back as probably like 2% critical damage, three uh, like 6% damage, and 4% boss damage altogether, which, which is like adding a very strong link skill, basically, on top of what you have now for the exact same points, right? Just redistributing the points. So that's how you want to kind of see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I got it, I got it. Okay, is there anything else that you're, um, that you can see that we should, 15, I think, that we should, uh, spend some attention on? Uh... Hmm. I don't think so. I think I think we touched everything. I just yeah, I think so too. Um, I don't think there's anything that was. I guess. Well, yeah. You don't have totems. Are you working on the getting the fairy heart? Yes. Uh, I'm working on getting fairy heart. It's just money, you know. Yep. Saving saving up pretty much to to get it for this event. Are you buying the and... one from the blooming shop still? Because that one's still open for, till the end of today, right? Uh, I mean, are they not the same price? Yeah, but you know, you have only have one per shop. So if you can buy that one for this character, and there's another character, maybe that uh, battle mage, you want to get one on, then you can buy the destiny mm. one for the battle mage if you wanted to. Okay, okay, I see. That makes sense. Yeah, as an option. Then but I'd today's the last day, so you'll have to <laughs> make that decision yeah. rather quickly. Yeah, I think it's worth yeah. it. Um, yeah, it, it's a big expense up front, but I think it's worth it. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is oh, do you know if there's like, I I I I don't know if I'm asking the right question, anyways. But do you know if Helix would get multiple tries a day? Because losing out on I a hope, day I, is kind of brutal. I don't think so. I hope so eventually, but I don't think so. They're just non K non KMS content is just highly highly neglected. You have to make a big mm -hmm. stinker out of that one before we get anything like that back. It, it's crazy, though, because they just increased, you know, the... It's kind of like, yeah, like the kind of nurse when everyone else is getting stronger. And then it's like Golic's entry nurse when every other boss is getting, like, more entries. It's, it feels really disconnected from each other. So, um, okay. yeah, I'll make, I'll make a point. I'll make a note of that. I'll uh, definitely yeah. <laughs> ad address that with some people, okay? Yeah, and then... 
yeah, I guess we hit everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I will probably be back in like six months if I'm still playing because mm -hmm. I I like your videos a lot, honestly, and uh, they're really informative. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, you're very welcome. Uh, of course, you're free to check out all of the resources that we looked at. Maybe the flame video in depth if you feel you need more info. But um. Yeah, check out the calculations and stuff. I'll uh, I'll upload it on YouTube. But if you feel there's something we missed that's very important, you can always just hit me up on Discord. And otherwise, you can just ask in the chat, and I'll I'll be there to help you out. Awesome. All right. Well, good luck with everything. Yeah. Hope you get that uh, big star forcing uh, stuff soon. But hopefully, you have the money yeah, by then to uh, to take advantage of it. Right. Mhm. Mm All right. Well, uh, I'll see you around and have a good one. Yeah. Yeah. You too. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Cool. So, if this was informational for you, I'm glad. Hopefully, if you're in a similar situation, you were able to pick up some stuff here and there, and it'll help you out when it comes to finding where to look at when you are improving the standing of your account. And with that being said, if you want one of these sessions, check the description of the video. If you would like to win a free session, make sure that you leave a comment on the YouTube video saying that you would like to win. And if you need any of the resources, you can check out my Twitch chat and find everything there. It's constantly in flux. Of course, with the Destiny update, some of the stuff is still changing, but it, it is, uh, you know, being updated as, as we go. Some classes are still figuring some stuff out. So hopefully that is uh, rather sooner than later, we should be seeing some, uh, some improvements in all of the, the resources. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video or live on stream over at Twitch. Bye. Okay, good. Boom. Uh, bam. And...